Being a musician is no joke, especially if you're trying to sound good. Hey everyone, I'm stuck in Taiwan during the pandemic. I haven't had a haircut in a month. Today, I'm just gonna uh, show you guys a little bit of Taiwan and also how I practice. This is just uh, one of my da daily days. Let's go. So before we uh, get to the practice room, I need some water and uh, I'm gonna show you guys how awesome Family Mart is here, which is basically like the 7-Eleven in, in the USA. Check this out. You have to scan your uh, QR code so that government knows where you are. This is my favorite part of every Family Mart is like, there's so many options and the alcohol is super cheap. But I don't really drink that much anymore. Fresh stuff. Every jazz musician is uh, social, socially awkward because we practice in dungeons like this. always stick in Taiwan so I need to like clean my pads before I play sometimes the most important thing that people hear is your sound when you play so the first thing I always do is I do long time warm-up with a, a metronome and tuner so. this month I've been working on my dynamics more so I'm practicing soft to loud so <laughs> Lately, what I've been practicing is raising my top lip, my, working on my upper embouchure, which I learned recently is really helpful to open up the sound and to not pinch. So sometimes like doing long tones, like, and then I lift my top lip. And then, you know, I will, I'll do like my, my harmonics, like. So when that happens, that means my tongue is too low. So I have to I have to work on that. After I've done uh, my overtone scales, maybe some overtone matching, you know. So I just went through uh, the entire register of the horn. Now I'm starting to feel more warmed up. I'm cracking less, and uh, my armature is loosening up. I, my airstream is going more. I'm feeling better now. Okay, so now after I do some of my sound warmups, you know, I would do a couple more things like low notes with the octave key. Do some octave drops. These help a lot with my embouchure too. As you can tell, I freak out about my sound. Like sound is so important to me. Okay, so now I'm gonna start practicing. Uh, let's say like a two five one lick of the week. Here's a uh, here's one I've been working on. Uh, Sonny Rollins lick that I got from St. Thomas, moving it through all the keys. Okay, so I would go all the way down, and then, you know, I just finished all, the, all 12 keys, now I'm gonna uh, work on something else. So, maybe like a pattern of the week. So when, you when you mess up, you have to loop mistakes. You don't just play, you, you stop yourself and you discipline yourself and you, and, you, and, and you loop just like what I just did. I'm breaking the area where I'm messing up on into small chunks. And I'll, it'll, it'll be better tomorrow. If I'm feeling like I'm already warmed up, I'll, I'll maybe play a tune. Like lately I've been working on on uh, blues and all 12 keys like I'll probably I do that every day to work work do a diatonic scale workout on that I will play like um, if I should lose you how about that so sometimes a good a good way to practice play in a way where you're linking what you're playing to the melody so like acapella take the time out sometimes it's good too <laughs> And then I'll put some time on. Let's do it with some time.
Trying to run the melody in my head, uh, playing some motivic ideas. At times, I felt like uh, my ideas weren't great, so I was always looking for new things to latch on. But I was trying to challenge myself in a way where uh, I could phrase and play stuff that that I usually n wouldn't play, or just like to dig myself in a hole and try and get out of it. And if I lose the time, I lose the time. I was playing stuff I usually didn't play, and then I started surprising myself. Like at one point, my 16 notes started coming out, which is great. Okay, so now now I'm going to be even more creative. Like. I'm just gonna put the metronome on beat two only now. And then let's see if I take away less time now, how good my time is. So now the metronome all of a sudden is at 40, which means it's at 160, but it's only clicking on beat two. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four. So I'll run the bass line once. trying to not rely sometimes if I did get uh, felt like I was off just a little bit I would recalibrate myself immediately when you have these types of exercises where it forces you to check in you can't lose focus with this metronome b2 the moment you lose focus you lose the time I, I mean I'm getting warmed up but I still don't feel that warmed up yet it takes me a long time to usually get warmed up like maybe an hour like maybe I'll just try to play a transcription by memory that I've been working on <laughs> my memory just see if I can remember these solos without the recording now <laughs> So my G sharp key didn't work the entire time. So I need to fix that right now. I'm gonna fix my G sharp key right now. This is my daily life. It's like you have to ask yourself, would you rather have a sticky horn or would you rather have leaks in your horn? So how long you stay here, like total time this time? Oh, I was here seven months. Really? You stayed here? Yeah, the longest I've ever been. Already away. seven months? Seven months. Oh my god. Yeah, just more more memorizing and then using it in my solos eventually. I did Dexter's time feel and then I did my own time feel and my own and then I did my own notes but Obviously, you could hear like how I pieced together that I synthesized that information. So like a lot of people, they can play transcriptions really well, but it's like, how are you using that information? In this case, I was like tonguing a lot like Dexter, like the back tonguing stuff. <laughs> That's how I learned how to play is like copying these solos and then putting them putting my own notes together trying to think in the vibe of like a different player like okay like let's say I wanted to play rhythm changes more like Coltrane my approach would be a little different <laughs> Like 
thinking in a different mindset, like different tonguing, like a lot of Dexter and, and Coltrane in, in my playing that I've like, I really studied those guys a lot. And then I try to like put my own notes together, but like still have like that influence or that feeling that they gave me when I listen to them play. One foot is like in the tradition and one foot is like, just like me trying to find my own sound, but it's coming from somewhere. It's not, I didn't make this shit up. Now that I've, you know, practiced jazz a little bit, I maybe like, sometimes I need to go back to the horn, like do some exercises, like I would do like, I've been working on my altissimo, do some altissimo practice. <laughs> take breaks, drink water. Being a musician is no joke, especially if you're trying to sound good. Then I would, you know, I, I've been working on a lot of chromatic intervals. Like I, I do intervals every day on my horn. You have to be even on your horn. Pro, when you hear them play, they're even on their horn. Like every note is the same length. It's all working together. <laughs> Okay, I did some horn practice. Now I'm gonna practice blues. I'm gonna practice jazz. I'm gonna, I wanna do stuff in 12 keys and make myself comfortable with metronome on beat two only. Before I start this exercise, I usually just run the triads once just to get myself in the groove. <laughs> I was on C, C sharp major, so I'll, I'll resume there. That's it. Okay, I'm tired, man. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me, uh, spending a day with me in the practice room. I hope this video wasn't as exhausting as it was for me, as it was for you to watch me suffer. Uh, this is what I do every day, it's just a fun little look inside of a jazz musician's life, what actually the type of work that's involved. Hope you guys enjoy this video and I can't wait to talk to you guys soon. See ya.